Waiting for it to show up that I'm live on Twitch, 1046. Don't know who's going to be here. My internet's been acting crazy lately, guys. I've got to call at and tomorrow, so it might get a little funky, but we'll get through it. All right, let's get this thing going. Let's get this moving. We're going to pull up the project here. All right. Oh, it's right there, actually. All right. Gonna clear out all this, all this stuff. We don't need any of this right now. All right, so we're gonna get the project started up running. All I've really done is a bunch of styling changes. I've changed a bunch of styling stuff. I feel like that's kind of boring to go over on the stream, you know, just styling the blog and all that kind of stuff, all that jazz. You can see the styles when we push it live. We're, I'm going to push this live to GitHub. And you'll be able to see all the codes. So you'll see all the styles and stuff if for any reason you want to use the styles or you liked them. All right, so we're good there. We're going to open up a new Chrome window. All right. Now you can see a little different. It'll get a lot more different. <laughs> keep it. All right. Oh. Okay. It's actually, hold on. This doesn't have any of the stuff that I've been working on because it's all the old styles. So we'll just do this real quick. We'll just actually do this. I'm just going to merge all these styles over to this one. Because I don't feel like changing them. Did you get it? Oh. But it's connection. I wonder if it'll let me do this. I'm trying to drag this styles folder over into here. Okay, let's see if we can do it. I'm sorry guys, I just know this would be a lot faster than going through and trying to do this another way. Uh, where, where is it? No. Okay, so that is not what we wanted. <laughs> Guess we want to add it. Ah, finally. There we go. Yeah, that good old delete. Clear that out. All right. Trying to see if we change anything else. I do not believe so. I think we're good. I think everything else should be okay. Ah, uh, there we go. Now you can see like the new header, a little bit of new things. Okay, good. So I'm actually going to go to medium real quick. I'm going to look for a blog where we can just copy all the blog data. So we have some good text because I feel like text, like Lorem Ipsum only goes so far. Of course, I'm not going to actually say this blog like, like it's mine. I'm just doing this for the sake of seeing what this would look like. 
I feel like Little Redemption only goes so far before it starts to look really just weird. And it doesn't look how your blog is going to actually be styled. So this will be an easy way for us to get some data in there. Okay, this is a test blog post. Throw that in there. And just because I've, I've got one styled up, I'm going to throw a block quote in there as well. Kind of just a stupid thing. Um, let's see, we also have code that we can put in there now that we kind of have styled. I can show you that in another one, but I just want to get something really, really simple here. Just some text in there. Let's go ahead and add a featured image, even though this is not going to work yet. We are going to want to get this working, that's the point. But I'm going to go ahead and publish that. Let's come back over here. Want to rerun npm run start to rebuild that Gatsby site. Now that we're done with those uh, little hiccups there. <laughs> All right. So today, guys, what we're going to go over is we're going to go over adding in images to your Gatsby site from WordPress. And there's a few use cases for this. There's the featured image, which will be covered in our Gatsby Source WordPress plugin. Uh, kind of, kind of that plugin will cover that. Sorry, my phone's not plugged in. But that that kind of will cover that case for us. And then the other cases will be um, inline content from your actual blog post content, which is not covered by Gatsby Source plugin, which caused a lot of frustration for me to try and find an, an elegant solution without really having to do a lot of extracting and, and interpolating data and doing all this other stuff. Found a super elegant solution that is stupid easy for how much time I spent on trying to do it before. And then there's also images that we have living on our actual Gatsby upload. So if like we upload with an image on our local Gatsby uh, source files, we want those to be rendered based on whatever component they're in. We don't want them to have to be rendered from the top and then pushed from props all the way down to where we want them. We want them rendered with that exact component. So we're going to cover those three um, use cases for images in your Gatsby site in today's live stream. The first one being, um, right now, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the, the live stream on OBS and it just looks really crappy because of the Wi-Fi, so we got to get that fixed. But anyway, so we're going to push on. The first one will be covered in the blog post, uh, featured image. No, sorry, blog post, inline content images. So we're going to handle that one first. So first things first, let's go back to our post. Let's actually throw an image in here. Let's go right here. I'm going to add a block, add an image uh, from the media library. We already have one. I've already given credit to the Unsplash artist. I mean, the Unsplash yeah, artist, photographer, however you want to say it. Um, because I feel like that's important. That is their picture. And, you know, they deserve that credit. That we get to use it for free. It's an amazing thing. So we're going to do that. Now we do have to restart this one more time. So we're going to start this up and we're going to go to our post page and we're going to see that none of the images are yet loading. Um, and that's obviously not what we want. We need our images to come in and we want them to come in, you know, cached and, and sized correctly and all those things. So we're going to jump into that right now. Okay, let's go here. Let's repost this. No, where's that? We didn't give it a category, did we? I don't know. Can you tell I don't use, oh, there we go. I said, can you tell I don't use WordPress too much? Uh, let's add a category to it. Oh, it is in one headless CMS, okay, cool. 
Oh, sweet. Okay, so as you can see, we have one, we have no featured blog image, and two, the image that we try to bring in inline through um, through our post content is not coming in either as well. So big problem. We got to get this fixed. So let's start off with the featured. Uh, let's start off actually with the inline content images. This is the one that took me forever to figure out, and it's actually the simplest solution you'll probably find uh, for this problem. And I couldn't believe it even existed. But this is all shout out to Tyler Barnes. He came up with this solution, and he does admit if you go to the GitHub page for it's called Gatsby WordPress inline images. If you go to the uh, the GitHub page for this, he does say it does have some shortcomings. You know, it is a work in progress and it is not done. It's only going to work for the post and the pages post types from WordPress, which is fine for us because actually like the legit post, not like a custom post type, but like the legit post. But that is fine for us because that is the only thing we're using this for. Uh, it has some limitations in the fact that he doesn't have caching set up um, and some optimizations. So we can check performance. Like if we had a real image heavy blog post, we can check performance and see like, is this hurting us? But I think if the image is optimized prior to uploading it to WordPress, just a little bit of effort on our part, it'll kind of clear that up and that won't really be a problem. So first thing we did was we installed Gatsby WordPress inline images. So you are going to head over to Gatsby config so we can set up this plugin. <laughs> And so to set this up, we're going to go to our Gatsby source plugin, Gatsby source WordPress, I'm, excuse me, a plugin and add a plugin to this plugin. <laughs> so it's going to take the plugins argument, it's going to be an array. Go ahead and get that in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to resolve and give it the name of the plugin. Gatsby WordPress inline images. And then we need to re-give it its options, which means um, we need to retell this this piece of the plugin now. Um, our base URL and protocol. So we're just gonna recopy those into here because they need them over again. So I'm just going to do this right here. Boom. Ah, I forgot something. Boom. All right. So we installed the plugin. Then we need to go to our Gatsby source WordPress plugin and add this plugin to it because we're essentially he what he did was extend the Gatsby source WordPress plugin. So we resolve to, to the plug to the module we installed. We give it the options and it states on the GitHub page that we need to re re input these options. So re input the base URL, re input the protocol. And literally, guys, I'm not even joking. That's it. The plugin literally takes care of the rest. Watch this. We're gonna give this file a save. Wait, before I before I run that, we're gonna go back. Remember, this image is not this image is not working. So we're gonna give that file a save. We're gonna run this. Do, 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 do. Gatsby's gonna build big, all, all that good stuff. Oh no! Do, 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 do. Cannot find module Gatsby image. Do I not have Gatsby image? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ah. Gatsby image installed. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I I see that it's installed on the package JSON, but we're gonna go ahead and reinstall it and see maybe if that will fix this. I didn't run into this error the first time, so I'm kind of curious. Trust me, guys, doing the doing these images on on the the blog, I ran into a lot, a lot of image, a lot, a lot of errors. I'm sorry, a lot of errors. So. Okay, let's try and ah, let's try and give that a re go on the run, the Gatsby um, build. Yes, looks like we're going just fine this time. Good. Okay, like I said, image is not working right here. Watch this and let this finish building. All we literally did was install this plugin and put what four lines for the config for it. 
as an extension pretty much of the Gatsby source WordPress plugin. So, and of course now it wants to take forever. I told you my Wi Fi has been terrible to get today, guys. I'm so sorry. Oh, man. Oof. This is a uh, this is bruising. There we go. All right, we've got this installed. Give that a refresh. Oh, it's still not working. Plugins resolve. Just making sure I have everything down right. Well, it looks like everything's right. Got all this stuff taken care of. Let's go. Let's see if it's. Oh, you know what, guys? I know what I had to fix. So, I had fixed this when I was trying this the first time, and I forgot uh, to do this on this one. But if you see, we can see our image source right here. I just inspected the page. You can see HTTP localhost. 8,000 and there's no slash after this 8,000 for the WordPress content. So starting with this WP content is what we're actually pulling from the WordPress uh, from WordPress. But when I set up the site, I never put a trailing slash on this 8,000. So let me show you what I mean. I believe it's in. It's not in Gatsby node. It's gonna be. It's gonna be in here. Ah, so under the search and replace content URLs, I have this replacement URL being um, our Gatsby site. And we actually do not want to do that because what it's going to do is update all our old. So it's going to tell it update all the places where our WordPress install is with our new URL. We actually do not want to do that because then the images and stuff that we're getting from our WordPress URL are not going to work because it's going to be replacing that. It's going to be replacing that with that URL that we give it there. And even if I did have the trailing slash on there and it was a correct URL, even then, that WordPress image does not live on the Gatsby site. It lives in WordPress. So we need to keep that URL for that URL. So that is that is what I uh, fixed on the when I did this test run. And I forgot to put that in the notes. So I'll definitely add that to remove that search and replace content URLs. So now we come here. <laughs> We reload the page and voila, here's the image right here for us looking all nice and grand. And as you know, we brought in the actual size image. Um, so it is big. It's even bigger than this. This is actually contained because of the styles that I have on this. But that's okay because we could easily, easily, easily um, edit this image, use WordPress mush on this image, use a bunch of things uh, when we upload the image to kind of contain its size. Uh, to make it a lot easier to load for our website. So that is that is how easy and quick it is literally to get inline images working on your post. Shout out to Tyler Barnes for that super, super um, simple solution for that. And you know, that's great. So let's get this featured image set up now. So to do the featured image, um, we already have a featured image added to our post on WordPress. We made sure to take care of that was it actually let's let's do a different one since we did that one in the body let's do this one we're gonna do that one we're gonna update this okay so then what we're going to want to do is go to plugins already have an install but we're going to want to install advanced custom fields and what that's going to do is if you don't know what advanced custom fields are essentially what it does is allows you to add different 
input field values to your post or pages, post types or pages on WordPress. So it essentially gives you a lot more control over the content that your page is able to just um, to house for that page. So it essentially adds that field to that page or post in the database so then you can pull it onto your site whether you're using a WordPress theme, whether you're using a custom front end like we are, uh, whatever you want to do, it's adding that input field to that page or post so that you can use it for your site. So uh, install this plugin, Advanced Custom Fields, it's free, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so we're going to go to, and it's going to look like this on your sidebar, so we're going to go to Custom Fields. You see already, I've already added it. You're going to go to Add New. And it's just going to look just like this. So I, you just put in the title, I put in post because it's simply going to be for our post. You click add field. As you can see, I'll edit this one. I called it featured media. That's very important. You're going to want to call this field featured media. And then if you click in here, it should automatically generate this uh, field name. If it doesn't, you can just type it in featured underscore media, all lowercase. You're going to drop down the field type, click image. Uh, you're going to click, we want the return format to be the image URL because this would be the easiest way to display it. Um, preview size is just preview size for WordPress. It doesn't really matter. And you're going to close that. And that's going to be and that's going to be all you need to do for there. Then you're going to come down here to rules. You're going to select post type is equal to post. So that way every post has this post type of featured media. And then you can just leave all that stuff the same. It's fine. You're going to click Save. Mine's Update. So then what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to go to Post. This is Test Blog Post. You're going to be able to go over here and you should see down here we now have a Featured Media um, custom field. So this is our custom field. This is the Featured Media that comes with WordPress. And now a lot of sources said like Gatsby Source WordPress plugin works with the feature media that ships with WordPress. I could not get the endpoint in GraphQL to show up for that feature media, so maybe I was missing it, maybe I wasn't doing something right, but I found this solution to be a lot easier and it got the job done, so I'm not really too worried about it. So what you're gonna come down here is you're gonna add image, just like you would with the other one. We're gonna select that and bam. So now we have a featured image selected under that custom field. We're gonna go ahead and give this a save. All right, and now let's go into the endpoint actually and see what this looks like. So I've already got it up. Um, you know, we select the WordPress post, slug. We can just put in slug for any blog post we have. I just put the ID on there just because, and then let's back this up actually and show what this is going to look like. So if we come over here to WordPress post, we chose the slug and now you can come down here to featured media and this is showing up because of our advanced custom field that we added in before I did the advanced custom field this was not showing up for me so a lot of people said this should show up without it but however it did not show up to us to put in the advanced custom field and that's why it's very important that you call it featured media because that's actually something the WordPress API is looking for um, when they add to the GraphQL API so there's not everything that the WordPress REST API transfers equally over to the GraphQL API, but featured media is one of the things it's looking for. So I think when I added that in there, it automatically pulled it out of advanced custom fields into here. Not too sure on that, I might be wrong. So if y'all know for sure, definitely correct me on that. And so we know the truth on that, but anyways. So we're gonna select uh, featured media and then So we select feature media and then the source URL and then the title for that feature media. You can run that. You can see the source URL and the title. So the reason we need the source, the reason I told you to save it for, by the URL is because now it's super easy just to grab the source URL and bam, we have the exact URL that we're going to plug into our Gatsby site to serve that image from our WordPress site. And then we have the title and we can use this for um, Credits, run splash, alt tags, all kinds of things like that are super, super um, good reason to pull back the title. You can also pull back the alt. I don't know if I included an alt on this one. 
So you can also pull back the alt text. Yes, I did. So if you just want a specific title for like, you know, credits or whatever you want to do that for, and then you want a specific alt text, you can do that as well. So you can pull back all those things, have it looking super good. So great. So that's kind of how that's working. So since we added that that uh, custom field, now we have this endpoint that we can, or I'm sorry, now we have this uh, data point we can hit on our GraphQL endpoint from our WordPress post. All right, so let's head on over to our post template. If you remember this last time, we made this post page template where we got um, all our post content, all our post query stuff that we needed for this. And what we're going to do is we're pretty much just going to add in the stuff we need for the featured media onto this query. Right here below author name. We'll just add that right in there. Boom. So now we're going to update this query with the featured media information that we just saw on our GraphQL um, test, test zone place, wherever you test the endpoints at. Um, so we're going to pull that data back now here. So what we're going to do with it is we're, we're going to want to throw that in wherever you want to set your featured image. So I'm going to create a spot just for it. Actually, I redid a whole, all this entire post. Uh, I redid all that markup for this. So as you can see, we have an overall post uh, div. We have a post header that has a post title. This is the same as we had last time on our page and our post template. We have the WordPress title, we have the WordPress date by, and then the author name. Then we have, a, this is what we just added, WordPress post image. <clears throat> and so how we're gonna grab that image URL, this was, uh, it's very important to put the URL, it's the easiest way to do this. You should go image source equals data, WordPress post, feature media, source URL, boom. We put the URL right in there. You don't have to manipulate it, you don't have to change, you don't have to grab an object from an array. Boom, super simple. Alt. You can go alt data WordPress feature media. I did title here. I'm actually going to change it to alt text as we have down here. So we can have that alt text be a little bit different. And then I added a post image source, which is just the small text you're going to see underneath the image and use the title for that right there. So this is all the new stuff that we added. All the rest of this stuff is kind of stuff I've just changed and moved around. Um, I also added a post divider, a post author um, component, which we'll see in a minute when we go over the third way of adding images, which is through images in local files. And then like a little author component and a newsletter, just the UI though. We'll hook that up on another video, on a separate video. I'll show you how to hook that up to get MailChimp, AWeber, Campaign, whatever you use for email service hooked up to your site so you can get newsletter subscribers to your mail list. So that's literally all we have to do to get this featured image working. We're going to give this a save. We're going to let it compile. Uh, it's hate me because I don't have any of these things at once. Needed all that. I actually have like a really OCD, I guess, kind of thing about about imports. We'll do that. We need to bring some of these things over that I have over here that we'll go over in just a little bit, just so it doesn't hate me. That should be it. We actually just do that for now. Until we need to use it, we'll do that. So it doesn't cry about it. Okay. Back to the post. I'm not sure if we need to. Boom. Okay. So as you can see, those styles that we added in, those markups that we added for the post featured image, it is coming in right here, real big and bright, looking real good. Post featured image. Wow. So, hmm. Didn't we change this to? Do this feature media? Are we really pulling? No, these are both this. So let's see something. Let's see which one is truly pulling. This might be interesting. Let me give that an update. 
think I'd have to rerun this for this to update. So we're gonna do that. I want to see if this is if I was wrong about this. Give this one start. Once again, taking forever. <laughs> All right, we're compiled. We're gonna give this a refresh. Oh, you know what? No. This is test block post. Let's change this one too. Let's change. Let's change them both. So we're gonna delete that. I'm really, I'm really perplexed about this right now. <laughs> I really want to know. So we're going to select that there. Uh, replace this image with that one. I'm just going to just gonna get rid of that one. But that should stay the same. We're good. We're going to redo this. Like I said, you guys, this is my first time using Gatsby too, so all the trial and error, we're gonna figure it out together. <laughs> we're gonna figure out how, to, how it's working to make sure we can uh, get this built correctly. Right. Hmm. So it looks like it actually is using the featured media. So it wasn't so featured image. So it was not showing up at all before I put the advanced custom field, but it looks like you do not need that advanced custom field at all. It's just gonna know that the featured underscore media is this image right here. So you can kind of disregard what I said earlier about having to do anything really with the advanced custom field to see. Well, yeah, because even it does save these values in the database. So let's let's delete this to make sure. Like to really make sure because it does save the values even when you clear them out it saves them in the database a lot of times so if you like come back and like re-add something back it'll automatically be in there all that kind of jazz so we'll see let's just let's just make sure real quick that's what happens when you code live <laughs> Wow, okay, so cool, great. You don't need the advanced custom field. You don't even need that. You literally just have to put, not all of it, all of it. You literally just have to put your featured media onto the onto the featured Im image and it will grab it. I, I was not seeing this in this GraphQL playground before I added the plugin, but maybe I just missed it. So we've got it, cool. This is how people said it should be working. So this is sweet, this is awesome. As you see, we have our featured image, we have our blog image, and so we're pulling in both of these images from WordPress super easily, super nice, and this can, this is super clean. So, and as you can see, here's a small text that I told you about under the image. That's actually the image title. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with the way this looks. And if you want to give credit on an image like this, all you have to do is come in here. Click and write a caption. We'll update that, and then next time we pull data, we'll see that coming. We'll see that come in um, whenever we restart Gatsby in a second, which I'm sure we will. So yeah, so that's great. So now those are the first two ways. So we've covered inline images in in the post content. We've covered featured images, and now we're going to cover images that are never going to change. So you can you for whatever reason, want to host them on your Gatsby site or, or in your Gatsby files, and that's just how you want it to do it. So first things first, add the image to your images folder in source in Gatsby. That's gonna be the first thing we wanna do. And the cool thing that Gatsby comes with is a thing called Gatsby image. Um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that's already downloaded, download, <laughs> installed. And that's what I was surprised earlier that it said I didn't have, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure Gatsby image is installed. Um, depending on what starter kit with Gatsby you start with, it might have this set up already for you, it might not. 
mine already had it all set up so I did not actually have to add anything let me find it I'll show you um, do, 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 do. I'm just missing it. Yes. You're going to want under under here, under this plugin, it's under kind of like its own resolve. You're going to want this done. So you're going to want a Gatsby source. Yeah. You're going to want a Gatsby source file system. And you're going to want to tell it its options are name, images, and directory source images. Pretty much what you're doing is telling Gatsby where your static images are going to live. So you're going to want to have this set up before we get this done or else Gatsby's not going to know where to look for your images and um, the relative paths aren't going to work that we're going to use in the Gatsby image component. So once you get that set up, it's pretty, pretty uh, straightforward from there. So kind of when you when you import images into a component to use from this from this folder, Gatsby limits the file size that it can be to a pretty small amount, which is because Gatsby wants to keep its build file build folder small and wants to keep it fast. It wants to be able to serve the st uh, static assets as quickly as possible because it's a static site generator. So um, I kept running into an issue that it couldn't work with the image, it couldn't work with the image, but it was working fine with the logo SV. SVG that we have in the header as you can see here we have source logo and I imported the logo just fine from the images folder everything was working fine so I was confused when I created this author component where did I put that at oh yeah it's on the actual page template so I created this author component little author well it's not a component this is all author piece of code to show the author on the blog post it's actually right here um, and I was I had an image and I was trying to import the image just like I did with the logo and the header and it just kept failing and it was because the file actually was too too large now I try to make it smaller try to make it smaller and just wasn't working so Gatsby actually limits it pretty small to where it can become kind of a hassle and I knew I was gonna be the only author on this side I knew that image wasn't gonna change so I wanted to really do something to where I could just host the file myself. Now, I could have easily gone into WordPress, uh, done those custom field, fields we did earlier, and added an author image, author name, and author description to each blog post to be able to just pull in that data with the blog post and display that data here, just like we did with all the other data on this page. We could have displayed that data easily here, the image, the uh, the title, the name, the text, whatever, whatever. But I'm the only I'm the only author. It seemed like overkill. It seemed like there must be an easy way to grab this image from my local files without having to store it somewhere else. I just want to store it here. Um, small 75 by 75 pixel image. So Gatsby actually has a perfect answer to this problem. It's called Gatsby Image. So essentially what they do Sorry, I'm finding my notes on to make sure I do not get it wrong, what we're doing here. I can't find them. So anyways, what we do is if you go to your components folder and you look, click this image, Gatsby has this component called Gatsby image that is actually using what we used earlier, the static query, to load in the image on build time to whatever component that you're serving it from. That way it doesn't have to pass it down as props. Um, it's fast, it's easy, and it's only loading it when it needs to. So it's it, it's using a static query, which allows us to load the, the image directly from the component rather than passing it down. So it's a super great solution to the problem, that the exact problem that we we're having. Because when Gatsby was building, it was at starting at the top, and it was trying to pass the image all the way down, and it was too large, so it would fail. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to extend this a little bit and kind of make it work for any use case that we might have in the future. Because right now, it works for one image. We well, we might have multiple images in the future that we kind of want to use, or multiple things that we want to use out of, out of, um, other or like other images that we want to serve just like this, and we can keep reusing the same file just so it's a global image component. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of start the same, but I'm going to call it author image, so we kind of know what we're doing here. And we're going to grab the data and use static query just like before. 
crap well if you remember this is gonna be it's gonna be exactly like what we were doing before when we used a static query in our old one so we're gonna query and this is set up if you can see below this is gonna be set up almost the exact same so placeholder image so what you're telling it is give me the image of that you're wanting to put here give me the image that you want to serve um, or give me the image that you want me to fetch and this is the image I'm going to use so we're going to set up file related path and this is why it was important to have that source file uh, resolve set up earlier in Gatsby config because then now Gatsby knows where your relative uh, file where your image is stored up so it knows exactly where to go look for this image so we're going to tell the tell Gatsby what the image is called I called mine my live from Patterson JPEG I'm gonna call it that. I need to go grab it. Let's do that before we forget. Grab that, put that in. Sorry for that blown up picture of me. I know it was terrible. <laughs> so we have our image in. Now here's where we're gonna differ a little bit from what they did. Now Gatsby has a lot of different options you can use when serving its images. Fluid means it's going to fill the space that it's given, kind of like relative but you can give it some constraints. So it's saying fluid, like fill up the space with them, but only go up to 300 in width. So that's actually not, we don't actually need that. We just need a fixed image size because it's just gonna be a very, very small uh, image that you saw on that author component. Let me show you one more time. It's actually just gonna go right here. So we just need a fixed size every time, even on mobile. So we're gonna give it a fixed size width of 75. height of 75 and then we're going to go we're going to spread the Gatsby image sharp fixed and what this is doing it's spreading all the properties of Gatsby image sharp if you don't know Gatsby image sharp is just another library amazing library they have that um, helps with lazy loading reducing file size images pretty much load your image in the best possible format possible so once again super awesome that they're giving you all this stuff oops that they're giving you all this stuff out of the box and making it so easy to use um, for your site so then what we're going to want to do is we're going to return an image fixed and we're returning an image from Gatsby image because like I said it's going to come with all the lazy loading and all that stuff with it so Turn image fixed and just like before the actual uh, information we're getting is stored in this data component so just like anywhere else that we're putting data we want to go grab this in grab this information drill down dot fixed all right so now we're returning the image and that's exactly what we wanted so now all we have to do we want to take that default off. Right. We're just going to export. Oh, I don't know why I'm putting it there. We'll just put it up here. We have it up here. Export cons out there. So now we're going to export. So now what you can see is we're exporting this pretty much query that is going to inject, inject the um, image that it got at load time. Because when Gatsby runs and builds, it's grab, it runs this query, grabs it. And then so it's like, okay, where all do you need me? So wherever we inject this author image component, it's going to already have the image ready to go for it. We're not passing it from the props. We're not reloading every time. So it's making the fetching of this image from our file super easy. Let's see. Where was the error? Oh, I already see it. Got ahead of myself there. Let's see if we can find the air.
Um, because you, oh, yeah, duh. Hmm, you're not gonna let me have both of these. I don't know if it's saying the error is because there's both in there. I think we're good. Let's see. Okay, we're going to run it like that. We're going to see. I don't know. I didn't try it with both of them in there, but I was imagining a, a thing where you could have like export on export const author image and like export export const uh, hero image and all these images that I knew I was going to export throughout. I had this idea that they would let you do all that in one file, so we'll see. So let's head back to this post page. Let's add this author back in there. And let's grab this. Oh. Let's uncomment this. Boom. Compiled. Boom. Boom. So as you can see, we're pulling in that image and it does work with multiple ones. I did notice that by the way. So as you can see, we're grabbing that image from our local file and displaying it here. Lazy loaded, lazy loaded, sorry, rendered in the most optimal sizes. Super fast, super quick. Every time I use this component now, wherever I want to put it, it will already have that pre-loaded, pre-fetched image for me ready to use from my files, um, which I think is super cool. So. Bam. Those are going to be the three ways you can add images into your Gatsby site from, from your WordPress. Um, even though the last one's not technically from WordPress. Inline from post content, thanks to Tyler Barnes. Featured image, thanks to GraphQL. And then locally from your local uh, image files, thanks to Gatsby image. So three super easy ways. All can be done. Uh, should only take like five minutes to get images going in your app or your website or your blog, which is awesome. So if you wanted to see a little bit of the other changes I made, as you can tell, the header's different. Um, the styles on the page are different. I added this little author component just because I feel like if people get to your blog from a different source and then they go to your homepage, they can see at the bottom about the author. They might want to click it and go to the about page of your blog, learn more about you. It's just a good way for people to know that, you know, you're the author of the blog. And then I have this little newsletter component. It's just literally the UI. Uh, it's not hooked up yet, so we'll, we might go over that in the video. It's really simple, so we might not, uh, but it just depends. But yeah, just hooked the, just went ahead and threw this UI in there. Just a few more UI things to do. I need to throw a footer on. I need to get the home page, uh, some kind of home page, and I need to just pull into my live streams from YouTube. And then we're gonna do a video going over. Uh, putting this bad boy live and I'm pretty sure I'm going to use Netlify so that's going to be awesome that's it for this video guys hope y'all learned something hope you liked it once again only my fourth live stream still trying to get used to it still trying to get it down I know I had some choke ups but we'll figure them out we'll get better thank y'all for stopping by please like subscribe to the channel